Hello and welcome to part one of this video tutorial series. This video series is being brought to you by MappersUnited.com. My name is Johnny and hopefully over the course of these coming tutorials I'm going to be guiding you through everything you need to know to be able to recreate this kind of complex terrain geometry for your own map. What we're looking at here is actually the blackout geo that came with the COD4 version of the tools and during part one we're going to start from the very beginning simply creating a basic terrain patch from there we're also going to be taking a look at a couple of common and understandable misconceptions that can arise with basic terrain and we're also going to be talking a little bit about theories and how we can help ourselves to approach building this kind of more complex terrain situation but we're going to start from the very beginning creating a basic terrain patch so how do we create a very basic terrain patch? Well, all we do is create a brush in the normal way by left click and dragging. In this particular case, I've selected a texture already. You don't necessarily have to because we're not gonna go any further than just creating a terrain patch at this particular time. So with our brush drawn out and still selected, I'm gonna come up to our toolbar and go to patch, simple terrain. That will open this box here called terrain density and at this point we haven't actually created a terrain patch first of all we need to select how many vertices columns we wish to add to this patch first we've got width which of course is along this axis height is along this axis to start with i'm going to keep it fairly low in vertices columns and i'm just going to click five for both of them click ok and bang we've got ourselves a simple terrain patch that is as far as I'm going to take it at this point during the course of these tutorials I'm going to be going through everything else you need to know to be able to manipulate these patches but before we get onto anything like that I want to cover a couple of common and understandable misconceptions that can arise with basic terrain so now we can create our basic terrain patch there's a couple of common misconceptions and understandable misconceptions that can occur especially amongst newer mappers and that if the first one is if you've ever watched or read some of the more basic terrain tutorials the majority of them start by saying draw out a brush that's 512 by 512 units for example and then add this amount of verts into it and the misconception comes in is that there's such a thing as a standard sized terrain patch meaning that every time we create a patch it should be this size and it should be this dense in vertices that is very much not the case every patch we create is there to fulfill a specific need or purpose within our map and uh, they come in various size and various densities of vertices that will become clearer as we go through these tutorials so the second misconception or not necessarily misconception but temptation is now that we've got our basic terrain patch here we might then go ahead and copy that by pressing the space bar lay it next to itself and then fill our entire map with these little squares of terrain or even worse create one giant terrain patch and and, and that's it um, there's two very good reasons why doing our terrain in that way is very much not a good idea the first being that you're never going to be able to achieve the level of detail with your texture work that you really want to achieve and as soon as you try doing our terrain in this way you're going to find out pretty quick that it's going to be a lot harder than you think and uh, the second and more arguably more important reason is that there's a very real limit to the amount of assets we can use to create any single map there's a limit to vertices there's a limit to brushes there's a limit to models there's a limit to collision data you name it there's a limit to it and laying in our terrain in these little squares is really going to relinquish a lot of control over those assets and in fact doing our terrain in this way is going to create a lot of wasted assets and one of the true skills of being able to use radiant is being able to create the highest level of detail using the fewest amount of assets and of course a lot of that comes with experience but it also comes to technique and hopefully those are the sorts of things we're going to be taking a look at over the course of these tutorials to not only give us the maximum opportunity for high detailed texture work but also keep control over our assets so those are the two things I'd like to cover. Next, we're going to move on and talk a little bit about theory and best ways to approach more complex terrain situations. It's really going to help us when we come time to build it. So we're coming to the end of part one of this tutorial series and I want to finish 
by just talking a little bit about a couple of things we could do to really help us along with building these more complex terrain situations. And the first and most important step for any map is to have a good idea of what you want to build before you build it. Having a map plan is always going to put us with a serious advantage when it actually comes time to building it. And whether that means you use a piece of paper and a pencil to sketch out your map whether you use paint shop to lay out your map idea, whatever the case is, having an idea of what you want to build before you build it will be a serious advantage. The second thing is, when you do actually come to build your terrain, I like to think of it in terms of individual features. The cliff faces, for example, are individual features. All of these roads are individual features, and we're going to build them as such. Doing it in this way is going to give us the control First of all, for detailed texture work, but also it will give us the ability to control the amount of assets or our terrain assets that we use to create these individual features. Those are the two things I'd like to leave you with for part one. Join us in part two where we'll start some proper construction and we're going to be starting with taking a look at roads. That's where we're going to start. Join us in part two. See you there.